Today we're going to be talking about Lewis structures and formal charges. First we're going to talk about Lewis structures and the rules for drawing them. Rule number one. Sum the, to the, sum the valence electrons from all atoms. If it's an anion, add the number of electrons to the total. If it is a cation, subtract the number of electrons from the total. So we're going to look at the nitrate ion and do this step. So as we can see we got one nitrogen, three oxygens, and an overall charge of one minus. So as we can see, nitrogen has five valence electrons, oxygen has six each, which means we got an equation here of five from the nitrogen time plus three times six, six times like three oxygens, plus one because of the overall charge gives us 24 electrons. That's step number one completed. Let's look at step number two. Step number two is to write the symbols for the atoms to show which electrons are attached to which. Connect them with a single bond which is represented by a dash which can also be represented by a, a shared electron pair. The central atom is usually less electronegative but this is not always the case. We're going to look at methane to see to complete step number two. As we know, methane has a formula of CH4. So here we see that C carbon is the central atom with four valence electrons surrounded by four hydrogens, each with one valence electron. And we can see they're going to share one electron each, as denoted by this. As you can see, carbon shares two electrons with each hydrogen atom. Because we know that those are two shared electrons, we can also write this as CH4, and between each atom have a line, which represents a bond. Now, that's what we have to do for step number two. Step number three is to complete the octets around all atoms bonded to the central atom. Remember, hydrogen only has two electrons for an octet. So we're going to go back to methane and see if we've done that. As we know, a, a straight line represents a bond, which also represents a shared electron pair, which means two electrons. So, as we can see, each hydrogen has a straight line to it, which means it each has two electrons, which means we've completed the octet for all the other ones, for all the hydrogen atoms. That's good. Step number four is to place any leftover electrons on the central atom, even if doing so results in more than an octet of electrons around the atom. So in methane, CH4, we can see that carbon has four bonds, which means eight total electrons, which means it has the octet. But let's look at an atom or a molecule that does not have a complete octet. I'm going to go, and that is iodine tetrafluoride with a 1 minus charge. So, so we're going to start with step number one always, calculating the total number of electrons. We know that iodine has seven and chlorine has, chlorine has seven as well and there are four chlorines. So we got seven plus four times seven plus one because it's an anion and it has a 1 minus charge giving us a total of 36 electrons. Now we're going to look at the Lewis structure here. So as we can see Iodine is the central atom because it's less electronegative, bonded to each, having a single bond to each chlorine atom. Because each chlorine atom has eight electrons, we filled it up, it has the octet, and we know total it has 30, I, the molecule total has 36 electrons. We know that there are four electrons unaccounted for, which we then put on the iodine atom, the central atom. And that's step number four. So step number five is if there are not enough electrons to give the central atom an octet, try multiple bonds. Use one or more of the unshared pairs of electrons on the atoms bonded to the central atom to form double or triple bonds. We're going to use O2, two oxygens, to figure this out. So as we can see, 
oxygen. Each oxygen has six valence electrons, giving us a total of 12 electrons. So first we're going to, we would assume it's a single bond between the oxygens, <coughs> giving us an octet for only one of the oxygens. This oxygen has a deficient octet. We want to try to get both oxygens to have a full octet. So what we're going to do, like step five number, like step number five tells us to, is we're going to try a double bond. As we can see here, an oxygen double bonded to an oxygen gives us an octet for both oxygens, making this better than a single bonded oxygen. And that's what you want to know. And those are all the steps for Lew or for drawing Lewis structures. But now we're going to go to formal charge. And informal, the definition of formal charge is the charge of the atom would the charge of the atom would have if all the atoms in the molecule had the same electronegativity. So what we really want to do is to calculate formal charge. We got some steps for that as well. So let's take a look. The first, um, the first step is to for all unshared electrons are assigned in a Lewis structure on which they are found. Step number two. For any bond, half of the bonding electrons are assigned to each atom in the bond. And step number three is to subtract the number of electrons assigned to the atom from the number of valence electrons in an isolated atom. Now that might not make too much sense right now, so we're going to have some examples and go through it. We're going to use the cyanate ion as an example. As we can see, it has one nitrogen, one carbon, one oxygen with a total charge of one minus. So that's where we get five valence electrons plus six from the oxygen, four from the carbon, and one from the total charge, giving us 16 electrons. So we're going to look at three possible Lewis structures for this and use formal charges to determine which one is best. First, we'll start off with this one, and here's how you do the formal charge. So first, we're going to start off with the nitrogen atom. In a nitrogen atom, there are five isolated electrons, and we subtract the number of we're going to subtract the number five isolated minus number of unshared electrons, which is two plus the number of bonded pairs, which is 6, divided by 2. So we got 5 minus 5 equals a total charge of 0. In the carbon atom, we have in, a car in an isolated carbon atom, we have 4 valence electrons, minus 0 because we have no unshared on the carbon, plus 8 over 2 because we have 4 bonds connecting to the carbon. 4 minus 4 gives us 0. And, last but not least, the oxygen atom. In an isolated oxygen atom, we have six, min er, we have six valence electrons. We're going to subtract total number. We got six unshared pairs of electrons plus one bond, which is two over two, which gives us six minus seven equals a minus one charge. And an important note is that adding all formal charges as should have the equal charge of the compound or ion. And because we know that the cyanate ion has a one minus charge, we have to add all these together and get a one minus charge, which we do. That's a thumbs up. Now we can check the next structure. The next structure is this. And as we can see, we calculate the formal charges on this one. And it has the N atom with a negative 2 charge. We got 5 minus 6 unpaired plus 2 over 2, which is because of the bond to the carbon. Gives us a total of negative 2 charge. Carbon has 4 minus 0 unshared plus 8 over 2 because it has 4 bonds, giving it a 0 charge. And then the oxygen atom has 6 
minus 2 unshared right here plus 6 over 2 because we got 3 bonds giving it a total of a plus 1 charge. If we add all these together we still get an overall charge of 1 minus. Lastly we look at this structure for the cyanide ion. The nitrogen atom is 5 minus 4 because we got 2 unshared pairs plus 4 over 2 because we got 2 bonding pairs giving it a minus 1 charge. The carbon atom has 4 minus 0 unbonded plus 8 over 2 because it has 4 total bonds giving it a charge of 0. The oxygen atom has 6 minus 4 because of 2 unshared pairs plus 4 over 2 because it has 2 bonds giving it a charge of 0. Add them all together you still get minus 1. So how do we know which one is best? Usually we choose the structure that has the most atoms of closest to or equal char the charge of most atoms equal to zero or closest to zero because two of these have equal charges we look because we know that this structure and this structure right here both give us lowest numbers to zero as we can see you got negative one zero 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 negative one so we know that these are the smallest numbers which means it has to be one of these <coughs> the way we determine it this way now is electronegativity which structure is more likely as we can see in the left uh, molecule right here the nitrogen atom has a one minus charge and in this atom or molecule right here we see that the oxygen has a one minus charge and we know that oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen so therefore we know that this Lewis structure is the correct one because it has the lowest formal charges and follows electronegativity rules and that's how you draw Lewis structures and formal charges